Well, today I'm going to go over my Charles Bronson collection. He is my favorite um, actor of all time. He's not an Academy Award uh, type of actor. I just really enjoy Charles Bronson movies and I really like him. And um, So I own quite a few of his movies. Um, the first up in my collection is a box set called Charles Bronson DVD Action Pack from MGM. It's a set of four films produced by my favorite production company, Canon Films. Um, all four films are directed by J. Lee Thompson. And it includes Ten to Midnight, Kinjite Forbidden Suspects, Messenger of Death, Murphy's Law. Ironically, the image on the front is uh, a still from the J. Lee Thompson, uh, Charles Bronson film, Death Wish 4, which ironically is not in the box set. And the highlights in this box set are Ten to Midnight and Murphy's Law. Ten to Midnight, really cool uh, suspense thriller. I was really, really impressed by this one. Um, not an action film, a suspense thriller, so but a good one at that. And then Murphy's Law. It's a silly 1986 canon film. Um, he's a burnt out cop. He usually plays those or either that or assassins who's handcuffed to a foul mouthed girl. Uh, not a good movie but very entertaining. I really enjoyed it. Um, then we got Messenger of Death. Uh, despite him holding a gun undercover, this is a, a, just like a mystery. He's a reporter trying to solve a mystery. I'm disappointed by that aspect. Um, but not a bad film but I was disappointed by that. Um, and then finally, Kinjite Forbidden Suspects, the final film that uh, Charles Bronson made for Canon. Um, another uh, um, disturbing subject matter, he's taking down a prostitution ring. Um, not a bad one, actually, surprised by that. I'd, before I bought it on DVD, I never saw this one. Um, and all the DVDs have an orange motif, very attractive, I like that. Um, two not included in the box set is assassination um, really disappointing look at that I mean where they screwed up on this is it's rated PG-13 what he has a freaking rocket launcher on the cover Charles Bronson in a canon film should never be rated PG-13 that is a sin awful movie terrible uh, recycles music from Invasion USA canon really showed they were having um, um, financial problems at the time not a good one, um, even especially since it's the director of the Bond film on the Majesty's Secret Service and Death Hunt. Uh, only for the most hardcore Bronson fans. Next one, another MGM with the orange mo motif, is Mr. Majestic. He plays a watermelon farmer uh, that's taken on the mob. It silly, sounds silly, but it's really a cl great movie, a classic Charles Bronson. Definitely a must-own for him. Um, they did re-release most of these in new cover arts without the orange motif, and... Uh, these old covers are definitely the best. Um, another MGM release where they broke the or orange motif is my personal favorite Charles Bronson film of all time, The Mechanic, recently remade with Jason Statham. He's an assassin training a, a protege. Great film, really a must-own. Uh, next up is probably his uh, most famous film, of course, and that is uh, um, the Death Wish uh, Pentology. Um, we have um, the first one, the classic um, Dino De Laurentiis production, very controversial for the day, gritty, realistic, man's wife and daughter get murdered and uh, raped and murdered, and he, it breaks him and he goes out for vengeance. Um, I actually saw this after seeing Death Wish 2, 3, and 4, which are more trashy, and so I was kind of shocked by, by this film. It's a really good movie. Um, then we have the film where Death Wish 2, this is when Canon Productions took over. And this is uh, the gritty, sleazy, grindhouse version, carbon copy of the first film. This is the kind you would see uh, in the grindhouse theaters. It's shit, you feel dirty while after watching, you need to take a shower. It's a more exploitative. Um, a lot of fans really like it for that, for that aspect. Um, a lot like the first one, but different. <laughs> so definitely not for all tastes. Uh, and then we got one of my all-time guilty pleasures, Death Wish 3. Uh, Michael Winner, who d he directed 1 and 2, he returns. This is like a comic book version. There's so many killings in this, it gets ridiculous. Bad acting, over the top, loved it. Just loved it. I, it this movie brings a smile to my face every time I watch it. Um, it's hard to believe if you watch this like right after the first film, it's like, whoa, what happened? But I'm glad it's a Canon spent a pretty penny on it. it has a high budget too. Um, MGM really screwed up 
these DB releases, they only release two, three, and four in standard full frame, which is really disappointing. I'd rather have, really wish they were in widescreen, but you know what? At least they're on DVD. I can't, I can't complain about that. It's better than nothing. And then, uh, of course, Death Wish for the Crackdown. Uh, J. J. Lee Thompson takes over the film series from Michael Winner. Uh, this is a little more, it's more darker than the third film, but it's still extremely violent. I mean, uh, Charles Bronson has another fiance. I mean, really, how many fiances can you have in this series? Whose daughter gets killed by drugs, so he ta decides he gets hired by this rich guy to go out take out the two biggest gang drug lords in the city of L.A. It's getting further from the original concept of revenge, but I still really enjoyed it. An explosive ending. Um, I really enjoyed that one too. And then, Death Wish 5, The Face of Death, or the DVD title, where um, they drop the 5, which is odd. I own this on tape, and the title sequence in the movie and the box art had a Roman numeral 5 after the title, but they decided on the DVD to remove the 5, and they actually went in with a computer and removed the 5 from the opening credits in the film, which is odd. I don't, I don't know what Trimark was thinking, that people would... Uh, uh, they would lose sales because it was the fifth in the series where they embarrassed that they made five. I don't know. Um, but they did that with other trium like Iron Eagle 4 got it, dropped the number in the title, and they retitled it something else. But oh well. Uh, a little annoyance. But um, this it was an in immensely missed opportunity. They tried to make it more serious and, uh, you know, and it just didn't work. It just comes out cliche and drab. Oh man, really disappointed by this one. Um, I mean, it's a missed opportunity. This could have been a real final swan song for him if they would have done it right. They hired a director that didn't even direct action films, so, yeah, only, only own it to complete the series. And we have the original release of The Evil That Men Do, uh, the only film during the 80s that he made that wasn't a canon film, even though it really feels like a canon film. J. Lee Thompson directs it again. Um, he's a... Uh, He's a retired assassin hired to go take down a torture guy in Central America that's torturing people. Really bizarre. Some really bizarre sequences in this, but um, it's a it's a, it's a definitely must own Charles Bronson film. Then uh, I have Breakout. Charles Bronson. He's, he's more comical in this. He plays against type. Has is hired to by uh, a, a wife of a guy in a Mexican prison to break him out. Really great concept. But I was really disappointed in it because the director was known for making TV stuff, TV movies, TV shows. The film just looks flat and boring. Um, but it's great to see Charles Ronson kind of break out of his typical mold. And we have Hard Times, Walter Hill's first film, and it's a great one. Um, it's more of a drama, but man, this is a terrific film. I did This movie does give me a chuckle because I, I read a list on the internet that talked about how... Um, uh, the top 20 films with uh, titles that sound like pornos, and this was on it. I thought that was pretty funny there. Uh, and then we have the original Out of Print Anchor Bay release of Death Hunt. Awful cover art. Fantastic movie based on a true story. I mean, Lee Marvin, Charles Bronson together again after The Dirty Dozen. Man, this is a great movie. Really love it. Oh, and then look at... Oh, the original poster art. Man, why didn't they put that on the box art? I will never know, because... That is a, that's a great movie. Um, and we have a double feature with a movie I waited for a long time to come in DVD, Telephone, and St. Ives. Terrible cover art. Looks like a cheapy DVD, but it's not. It's actually a Warner Brothers. Um, Telephone, he's a Russian that's sent to America to take out secret assassins. <laughs> really, directed by Don Siegel. Really enjoyed that one. Finally on DVD. Now, if only we could get... Columbia, Sony, to release uh, The Stone Killer on DVD, I would be completely happy. St. Ives, he's an author, kind of quirky character. Enjoyed that one, too. Um, and we got a suspense thriller, Someone Behind the Door. This, um, really underrated. I, It's a really pretty good... It's a, it's when uh, Charles Ronson went to Europe to, to break out as a star. Um, he did a lot of Italian films. This one's actually a French film. I mean, Anthony Perkins. I bought this on tape years and years ago, and I was shocked really shocked by how much I, it was a pretty smart thriller, lot good twists, and um, this movie is in public domain, there are tons of DVD versions of it, this version by Lionsgate, 
yeah, Lionsgate. This is the one, the only one to buy. It's in widescreen, great transfer. All the others are crud, full screen, crappy quality. This is the only one to get. And of course you got Alistair McLean's Break Art Pass. Wonderful, solving a mystery on a train. Really, really like this one too. You can get this for really cheap now. And then the first film he, Charles Bronson ever made with Michael Winner. Shadow's Land. He doesn't say a whole, I think he says like one line in this whole movie, but Jack Palance is after him for uh, killing some people in self-defense. Really enjoyed it. I really like this western a lot. Really good there. Um, over in my Euro Crime section, I talked in my Euro Crime video, I have uh, Violent City with him. Terrific. Um, very violent. Lives up to its title. I saw this originally as The Family on VHS. Um, Great Euro crime Italian film. Really enjoyed that. I also have some other Charles Bronson movies where he's not the main star. Um, films like Once Upon a Time in the West and The Dirty Dozen and The Great Escape. But those aren't Charles Bronson movies. These are all the ones where he's the main star. So that's my little DVD tribute to the man that is my all-time favorite actor. Still have more DVDs to get of him. Got to pick up the White Buffalo sometime. But that's it for now.